Hi everyone, welcome to the Express Flu Tips video. Today it's a very, it's different uh, format because, because that's live, so that's a live video on Instagram. So, I'm going to speak in English um, because I think then everyone can understand. If anyone does not understand and wants to speak in their language, feel free to do so. If I understand, I will answer your questions. First of all, I would love to let you know that I'm here to also answer your questions. So, it's not only that I'm going to speak and say some things that, of course, I'm going to do, but you can at any time write in the chat and, and ask some questions and I'm going to, to try to answer all of them, okay? So, the thing is that I decided to do this video, first of all, because also you voted that. And sometimes I do this kind of, I ask you with what kind of videos do you want me to do in these Express Flute Tips. And a lot of times it was almost going to win this Mozart Flute Concertos uh, topic. Obviously, I understand why. Um, but I always uh, preferred to speak about more concrete uh, topics too. And also you voted that, so... But it was always second option, second option, second option. So I thought it was the moment to do something uh, with that. So what I have to say, it's basically two things. Um, so today I'm not going to, let's say, share what is my, my point of view or my interpretation about that. What I'm going to share with all of you, it's basically some thoughts I have about the Mozart Flute Concerto, the two of them, the, the, the two of them, the only two we have, the G major and D major. And for me, what that's clear is that we should have like two flutists there. Like the flute player who is focused and worried and wants to improve a lot technically, and that then uh, like we practice a lot of things technically, we practice the sound, we practice the technique, we practice all of this. So the technical side, like the player side, the flute part, and the musician part. And these two parts should be together. Obviously, that's not only for Mozart, that's for every single piece we play, but I have the feeling, and I wanted to share that with you in that video, that with Mozart, sometimes we are struggling, because we play so many times that the motivation can go away, and also we play so many times that somehow we feel stuck, we feel blocked with that. It's like we know it so well, somehow, that it's like not helping us, because then we are blocked because we know all the tricky parts, we know all the technical parts that can be difficult, or we start to overthink um, because normally we have to play that for auditions or for, let's say, not so enjoyable situations. And I think that it's, per it's precisely because of that that we should work on the other part, like the musical, let's say, goal, what, is the, what we want to express with the music, so that we can have a little bit more fresh um, a little bit more fresh uh, version. Yes, Juan David, se va a quedar guardado. This video is going to stay, so uh, I hope that it works and you can, uh, you can everyone see that later, okay? So having said all of that, yes, it's kind of easy saying that, but the video, this, let's say, 20 minutes I will be around here, it's only, let's say, addressed to this. It's only addressed to give you a little bit tools in, and, or inspiration, so how to work on that. So first of all, I, I think that the basic, the, 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 the most important thing we should have always there is what we want to express musically. And this is concrete. The, uh, for me, in speaking now, I will not say concretely. You know what happened? When I hear young students, or even myself, it happened to me. This is why I'm saying all of this, because it happened to me. I also felt stuck so many times with Mozart, having to prepare it or... Sometimes it's like I was like fed up with it and, and like this, it happens. So always what helped me is trying to reconnect with the musical part. And the musical part is concrete. Uh, also with other students I'm hearing, when playing other pieces, it's like more easy to connect with this musical part when playing other repertoire. Uh, but not with Mozart, it's like more delicate even, no? Also, the versions can change very, very fast from one approach to the other. And that's also maybe not helping. But I think it's very important, first of all, to have a very clear version. And this we can work without the flute. That's the first thing. And it, sh it should be very clear what we want to do. We, sh we should have that super internalized. And then what we should practice technically, it's just to make that a support on this musical approach or musical idea we have. And for this musical idea, I'm not saying something now very abstract. Ab music, it's very abstract <laughs> itself, you know? Uh, it's, I'm not speaking now about, uh, let's say, characters or metaphors or something like this. No, it's very concrete, let's say, intentions, gestures, okay? 
and this is something we should really work on. I really recommend that you hear a lot of versions, I really recommend that you hear a lot of music, a lot of other concertos by Mozart, not only the flute ones, but the violin ones, the piano ones, etc. Because then you will have like much more sources and also that you hear for historical recordings, that's very very interesting too. So that your version of course will eventually change, will build up and that's also nice, that's also let's say a proof of the, of the evolution, I don't know if evolution is a good word, but yeah, the process we all, we all live. Because I'm not so sure if if the version I will have in one year will be better than the one I have now. I'm not so sure. That's why I don't, I don't know if using evolution the, the, the evolution term. But anyway, you understand me. Having said all of that, when we have to play that, I really would recommend you that you have these two sides totally, first of all, of all isolated, and then you can work on mixing them. Okay. So if I have to play Mozart G major concerto, simply. The, my approach would always be, okay, how I want to do it now. And if I have that, that, then I will hear, and I will always do it. I will hear, of course, the accompaniment. There are a lot of versions in YouTube with, without the flute solo. You can hear also the, the accompaniment, and then you can, you can sing in, inside your mind, or sing with your voice as you want, but for me it's also very helpful to sing, also ima only imagining, you know? And this is very helpful because then I'm training somehow this ability of having that internalized in my mind. And this is quite helpful for me later when I'm playing because it's like something I can go to to have like, like more security when playing and not start thinking about very concrete um, technical issues that can appear. So first of all, going for the concrete uh, stuff, I will just uh, try to have very clear what I want to do and then try to translate that into flute. That's valid for all pieces, but for Mozart, I think that's the key point. So, I don't know. If I want to have the first opening phrase. Then I have clear, it's this. Okay, two times I, I, sang, I sang the same thing, okay? So then what I'm going to practice is try to do this with the flute. It can sound basic, but it's not so easy, but it's for me the process. I'm going to try to do this. And now it's not the time to discuss if it's pam, pem, pe, pem, pem, pi, hom, pom, or it's another version, which is totally valid. But now my version is yam, pam, pa, pam, pam, pi, hom, pom, pi, ra, pi, pa, pi, ra, pa, pa, pi, ra, pa, pa, pe, prom, pim. So then I'm trying to practice to do this. First of all, not directly, but thinking. Okay, not, not bad. What can I improve? Then we have to be very analytic. What can I improve? I think it, the first note could be... If I'm not having much more trouble, I'm not going to repeat much more. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to just translate what I have in my musical imagination into, the, into that. And when I'm playing, then I'm not thinking. The first note, for instance, what I wanted to do with that, it was simply having a little bit more warm sound. Then I, I made Fulato, I have my tools, I can share with you in a lot of other videos. But I'm trying this. The technical part goes, comes here in order to help the translation, okay? And that's basically what I'm trying to do. In other accepts it will be much more complicated, but that's the thing. And then what I do, it's like I simply try to play. Simply try to play as if I had no flute. For me, the feeling is that when I'm playing, like I try to imagine that there is no flute. And then this kind of flow feeling of just thinking what I want to do, the idea I have, helps me a lot. Of course, I have to practice that. It's, 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 it's happening, not always what I want, that's the difficult part. But this is also what keeps me, let's say, motivated and connected with the music, okay? I try 
try to do when I am playing. Simply having this kind of flow feeling, okay? Again, it can be somehow easy to say, and we have to practice really a lot of the technical side to get maybe also this feeling. But this is what connects me to, let's say, keeping motivated and keeping going on. Otherwise, what can happen if, if we let, let's say, the flute player play without the musician playing, what happens is this effect. And this is why I'm doing this video, okay? It's this effect. And really, believe me, I'm not trying to make the caricature. I'm really trying to be honest. And, and if I continue playing like the flute player, that my attention is focused on the technical things or being very precise, then I will play. And for me, it's much more easy if I try. something is not speaking and something is not working well, then I'm going to stop and I'm going to go to the technical side. Okay, it's not that, oh yes, I play, let's play and everything. No, 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 of course, because what happens with Mozart, we have to be all the precise we can. But precise without losing this contact point with the musician we have inside. Because otherwise it sounds totally different, no? I don't know, Mozart D major concerto now. Flute is version. Mozart D major version, which I would love always to try, or what I have in mind. makes a big difference and really I, again I'm trying really not to make a, not to make a caricature I swear you because the, the first version I'm doing it sometimes it happens to me and it happened for me also in some auditions or something where you know you are nervous and then you get to this I uh, have to control and for me sometimes even if I'm honest it can happen that it's technically better but no one is going to prefer this one no, no one it's only maybe you when you are let's say with anxiety but no one I think no one else I think it's very clear and it's basic maybe it sounds super basic for you but I, I'm I'm facing that all the days when I'm when I'm hearing young flutists and I tell you I, I wanted to share all this with you because there are, there are these two worlds and it's quite of tricky how to find this balance between two of them okay I don't know um, any other except for instance um, what we could what we could do to to work on that? Uh, yeah, okay. For instance, Mozart in major again. When we go to to this, that's the idea I have, and I'm just focusing in that. But then, if I have to practice this, maybe some things happen, and then I'm trying to work on them, but without losing that. 
And if really I have to work something technically, then I stop, of course, and I work that technically. But then I'm very focusing on that, on that, like, let's say, problem, very isolated, and then I go for that. I'm not repeating and repeating and repeating. I'm trying not to do, because when I do this, never good results come, okay? So you have to play this, this except. And I'm having this interpretation that I sang in mind. In mind, sorry, maybe some of you don't like Yes, I'm not, so, I'm not going to say that I don't care. Of course I care. I want always to know what are people's opinion and I'm always be open to know other interpretations. But now it's the one I have. Maybe in some days it changed in mine. But whatever. Okay. For me, it should sound like this. So then I try to work on that. This is difficult sometimes for me. I have to practice a little bit to change very fast the registers and the color of the sound I want. I don't want it to sound bam bam. I would like to do, to do this kind of little details and it's not so easy. technical, uh, let's say, things that maybe now I'm like, making not them so obvious. For instance, articulation, I always try, but this, I think it's kind of working, but I, that, that's what I'm not saying, but articulation, I'm always trying that it sounds like legato somehow, that my feeling is like something which sings. This is something I feel, I, 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 I feel or I hear much, much of time, so this, for instance, this, this kind of articulation, you know? I'm, not, I'm trying always to avoid that. This is for me something very basic, otherwise I'm feeling super uncomfortable, you know. Uh. I'm trying always this. For instance, these kind of things, not so, sometimes tricky, you know. I'm doing exercise like... For instance, but then I go only for that, and that's not, let's say, musical, but it's because, yeah, it's something technical, and I just work that. I try to really work like that when, when practicing the Mozart flute concertos, otherwise, mm, this kind of feeling of being stuck and calm, and we can lose the, the focus on what I think is important, it's not losing our message. Because especially for auditions or competitions or entrance exams or whatever, it's like something so clear, something so, let's say, this crystalline, no? I don't know if in English that word exists, sorry. But it's something so clear that we really need to be very clear also. In it's this and we do this, and then here go less and we here we go more. And that's it. And then we should have everything super internalized, technically, in order to achieve that. Unfortunately, that's not easy. That's really not easy. That's why I'm sharing with you this video, okay? I don't know, for instance, another typical except everyone, or myself also, sometimes we get like stress like this. This. For this, I really, I tell you, when I practice this, I go, I do serious, like, I do like very slowly. But what I try is that the sound and the gesture 
It's the same I will have when I do it fast. So okay. And then I try to, to imagine that it's not something super technical like brum, 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 to it. Like because then it's like <laughs> we get frightened without, because of that, okay? So um, what I'm focusing in that kind of exercise, for instance, is trying to work them very calm down. And also I'm practicing from the technical side, like the like how to say the approach side. The approach side of trying to be calm down, because that's something that's going to help us when we have to play. And not this kind of feeling of Of course, it's not easy, but this is what I'm, I think we can do, no? that but what I'm trying is not only to work technically the fingers that also that they are clear but for me it's quite clear that it helps me or it gives me confidence to feel this kind of relaxed way of playing also I have to say that in this except also for the sound I have the feeling somehow that I'm like swallowing the sound I try to play myself so I'm not I'm never trying to, to play understandable but it's not, I'm not going to the sound but I'm letting the sound sound somehow this is something it really helps me also for this kind of feeling and especially for later this don't 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 understand me wrongly I really use air I, I use really air but but I'm swallowing it somehow I'm not oh because if I'm like that, then it sounds for later. Of course things can happen in life, everything can happen, but I think that when this kind of mistakes come, I speak for myself very personally, but this kind of mistakes, stressed, um, except sound, is because you are stressed and you have not worked that in a way that you can be cool and you can be calmed down later. It's something I'm always keeping learning, eh? mm, it's never ending this, but it's quite important so that we can have some tool so that we can make things sound cool and also in the musical phrase we have, which is the important thing in the end, okay? So that's it. Um, another except, for instance, that it's some, sometimes tricky uh, in, in this concert or in this exposition is this. When I can, in this except, I can like very easily hear if the flute player is playing or the musician is playing, because the flute player will always tend to do this. If you don't do, you are no, 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 that's that's a, a joke. But you understand, 
the articulation is not the same. It's not the important thing. It's not. It's again this kind of swallowing thing, this kind of round thing, this kind of resonance. And the upper note comes from the lower. Here the, the harmony changes here also. Important things that we have to know. I'm not speaking today about, about analysis and about the basic interpretation, but for me, it's clear that what I'm trying to do is Okay? So then I'm just trying to translate that into the flute. for you and um, I know maybe it's somehow weird because um, uh, it's not someone speaking about ah, I do this and to practice this I do this or whatever it's something a little bit more how to say more personal because with that's valid for all pieces for when we are playing with everything but with Mozart I really really can feel that immediately we should really um, use technique and we should never forget technique but we should totally don't think about that. We should have that in another step and then think about our message. That's the only chance we have. And if we are stressed about something, cool, cool, cool. This example, for instance. And play like that, very relaxed. Feel where the, where the registers are, very easy, no pretension, not... Also, it's not a character, no? This... Then, how you want to play? Like something which is playful, that has somehow some development also. Okay, so then you try. Okay, this is like, let's say, a process. Of course, sometimes it's not perfect, but it's also nice to identify why somehow, somehow, some changes I was doing. I was not giving enough space for the low register, and then it was sounding a little bit sharp, the low register. These kind of things we have to know. We have to be very analytic and constructive, not destructive, but analytic and critical with ourselves. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. I have to leave you for today. And that's it. And then the last thing I have to say is that, having said all of that, then it's also very important to practice run-throughs. Really, this is really, I really do. And always, if you are playing by heart, then do right th run throughs by heart. If you are playing with the score, then practice with the score also. Very, very important this. I mean, you have to give yourself tools so that you feel more confident when you have to play that. And it's a little bit that. And run throughs are for me very, very important. Because then you train, like, okay, now I play.
in the run through, in the run through, you are also experimenting. You are, for me, important thing is that also important. It's we should never lose this musical connection, okay? Not to get to the flute player playing, but it's also important that we know that somehow we always keep connected the technical part. It's not that we forget completely about that. Because sometimes it's helpful, it can help us to place, uh, to be more well, better placed or to anticipate. For me, this I do a lot. I know this something is coming, then I prepare, whatever. But this is important to know how to have this balance between the musical part, the artist part, which is, should be there, which is the basic, the basis, the message, and, and everything which is sustaining it, okay? So I really encourage you with these kind of tips that I shared with you today, if you can apply them for your practice and if you find them helpful, I would be more than happy. So that's what I'm trying always that I have to, to face that. And, and I'm always experimenting with this middle point, with this balance point, but that's it. Always try to not, let's say, not go to the, to the, to the side in which there is no musical uh, um, side or content because otherwise everyone can tell. And if you go to the super musical one and then there are a lot of um, technical problems, um, I'm not so sure if that's going to happen somehow because <laughs> every good flute player cannot, let's say, play without hearing things properly, I would say. So, I don't know. I think that maybe, generally speaking, it's very nice to investigate where are also the limits of the frame, musically. You know, because then, this is what happens to me always, and I keep doing that, if I'm always imagining new things I can do, like pam 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 pim pam 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 whatever, this pim pim, then I'm going to try that. attitude is like when we are always discovering new things that we can do with the instrument and this comes because of our imagination I hope it was interesting for you because I can be speaking about this topic like for ages because we will never end because it doesn't have an end and that's for me the magic and what is very motiv motivating about playing an instrument because it's this combination of these two sides and in Mozart <laughs> it's really the best way to train that so have fun, have a nice evening, and see you next time. Ciao, ciao.